money is neither bad nor good. It's according to how you use money. Anger is not bad or good. It's according to how you use it. But we as black people come from what we call a slavery trauma. And the slavery trauma teaches us not to have anger, especially toward Europeans or, or Caucasians. So we hold a lot of anger in us that we have toward them, and we use each other as an outlet for that anger. We use anger to distort the way our emotions and feelings are. It shades the way you interpret your environment, interpret yourself, and interpret other people when you're angry. So you have to learn how to manipulate it and use it just as well as the Europeans and Caucasians manipulate and use anger toward us. We have to be able to manipulate and use anger for our own benefit. It helps you get things done. It's already right be angry if someone has burnt your house or something destructive has occurred to you. That anger is all right. You have appropriate anger and inappropriate anger. And the thing is to learn when it's appropriate to be angry. Some people express their anger uh, uh, with food. They eat when they're angry. Some people express their anger at baseball games or basketball games. Some people use soap operas or talk shows as an outlet for their anger in their relationships. Or people use miniature forms of anger. Like if you're going out with someone, they may delay you or be a little late coming to a meeting or a little, of course, to be a little late leaving. That's what we call miniature anger. So they're expressing anger towards you in various subliminal forms that you may not be aware of, and they may not be aware of. I'm not saying that people are totally conscious of themselves 100% of the time, at all times, in all places, in all situations. People are not that conscious of their anger, nor they're conscious of yours, but we use anger to beat each other up and batter each other. But if we don't learn how to manipulate and use it in a positive way, it can be very destructive in a relationship. Anger is hereditary. Anger is passed down from us racial anger, and it's anger from your mother, from your father, from your grandmother and grandfather. Anger is hereditary, and it's just passed down to us. And we're not aware of that. And we abuse ourselves because we're not aware of how to use these emotions in a positive way. We're angry at the failure of our race to liberate itself from oppression. We're angry at prejudice. We're angry about slavery. We have a lot of anger, and it's justifiable anger, but we have to learn to use it in a positive way, such as using herbs sometimes to calm us when we're angry, such as chamomile or catnip or hops or um, kava kava or valerian, those calmative, sedative-type herbs that help calm us down when we're too angry and not able to control it in a, in a rational way. So what we're going to do now is look at some of the specific you know some of the things you have to do to protect yourself around people who are not able to control their anger uh, they may get violent they may hit you they may hurt you they may hurt themselves uh, so you have to protect yourself uh, physical safety comes first realize that you have the right to be treated with respect around an angry person don't accept responsibility for your partners or your friends anger their anger is their responsibility and they have to resolve it Watch your own anger. Don't get angry when they get angry because that escalates the anger. Don't become too angry yourself, but also don't become an angry avoider. Don't isolate yourself. Get support from others. If a person gets angry, we tend to go in another room, tend to not to be social, and that's not good. That will make you depressed. Think about what the angry person gains from his or her anger. You want to Understand how the anger benefits them, how it benefits you, and how does it serve my heart. Learn how you have been affected by your partner's anger. Sometimes we mold our emotions, and we become a codependent and sponsor their anger. Think seriously about leaving if your partner won't or cannot change. You're not in the relationship to be a therapist. So you have to understand that and accept that responsibility. Or else you're a silent participator in someone else's anger. Now, if you want to get rid of anger, you have to challenge your old thoughts that keep you, keep you angry. There are four kinds of thoughts that help keep people angry, and that's rigid beliefs about the world, rigid beliefs about yourself, thinking you're helpless, and blaming others for your anger. A rigid belief is like 
can't trust the world. People are dishonest. Never can believe or trust a man or a woman. It's a cruel world. You have to fight to stay alive. These are rigid beliefs. A belief is something that has to be just as flexible as your emotions. And born fighter. That's why I get angry and upset. I'm a man and men are naturally aggressive and therefore they naturally get angry. Remember your thoughts and the feelings have to be flexible. That's how nature works. Once you lose your flexibility, your ability to adjust, that's when you become sick on any level. Now then, the way out begins by climbing out of this anger like it's a ladder. You take time out when you're angry. Just stop. Go to another room. Say, excuse me for a moment. To the person who's angry or when you get angry. Wipe that frown off your face and relax. Just try to bring some uh, smile or think of a funny joke or something. Try to relax yourself. Listen to some music or take a walk or a song. Listen to a song. Quit trying to control others with your anger. That can make you angry when you're trying to control someone and be in, in charge all the time. People with slavery trauma tend to do that. Except that people are different. Don't get angry because someone doesn't agree with you or doesn't do what you say do. People are different. Ask people to do things for you. Don't demand. If your demands are not met, then you justify that by being angry. Reward. Don't punish or threaten. The world is built around rewards and rewards and punishments and you have to learn how to use them speak quietly and don't curse you don't want to curse yourself and you don't want to curse others that will help you get into anger be responsible for everything you say and do don't say the devil made me do that it is your responsibility treat others with respect and that will stop the person from getting angry with you and you get from getting angry with yourself Tell others what bothers you. Be direct, specific, and polite. Use I statements. I don't feel good about this. This doesn't please me. Be specific. Then people understand how to satisfy your demands or whether they want to agree with you or not because you're specific. And it's true. Angry people come from angry families. The single most common cause of severe anger is an angry home. Kids learn how angry they should be from their parents. They learn when to get angry and how and how much. And it's called modeling. You are taught feelings and emotions. It's not something you're born with. Your parents teach you. So if you sit in a room and look at TV, that'll make you happy. This, if you do this, this will make you sad. And people teach you emotional responses. Severely angry families do things differently from normal ones. They have three destructive habits. They think a lot of anger is normal and expected. Nobody listens until you get angry. So they raise their voice, start fussing and cussing. That's when people pay attention to you. They try to solve their problems with anger. Those are three most common things that angry families have. And black folks are very angry. We have to get a grip on this in our village. And we have a lot of things to be angry about. That's the main thing you have to understand, but we have to learn how to channel that correctly. In angry families, a lot of anger is normal and expected. Anger has one great value. Anger is a sign that something is wrong. It's pointing to some kind of adjustment that you need to make in your life or make with others or making your relationships. Anger is not the solution. It helps you be aware that you are in search of a solution. Here's some of the controlling things that people can do. To control your anger, take a time out to stop the violence. Warning, simply walk away from someone you're angry at, work or at home. You've got to do things during the time out that will cool you down. It's just not enough to walk out the room or sit in your car or listen to some music. You have to make a plan of what you're going to do to 
overcome your anger or better be able to manipulate it, you realize that you're close to exploding. You know when you're getting ready to blow a fuse. Rage doesn't just happen. They're not like not like a lightning bolt from the blue. They are predictable. They are always a few warning signs. You need to learn your warning signs. Some people know when their voice gets a little dry or the temperature rises or their heart starts racing or they start blinking a lot from their eyes or their lips quiver or their hands start shaking. You have warning signs when you're getting angry. The body signals like sudden sweating or your gut starts tightening or a surge of adrenaline. Thoughts such as that's it. No more. I can't stand it. Or she can't say that to me. I hate her. These are warning thoughts that you're getting ready to go into a rage. Actions like pacing the floor or making your fists or pounding your fists in your hand or raising your voice. If you catch yourself doing this stuff and you can't stop immediately, you must take a time out. Don't wait for the anger to explode. You see the symptoms, know your bodily symptoms, thought symptoms, and your actions. You can better control your anger so it can be a benefit to you and not something that's destructive. Anger is used all the time, every day, toward black people. And we're taught that we are not supposed to be angry. But certain things you have to get done in this world, you need anger to get it done. To control your anger, take a time out to stop the violence. You leave. Tell the person that you're really upset with. Tell them. Tell him or her you've got to leave before you hurt someone or break something or hurt yourself or hurt them. But promise to return when you can talk without losing your temper. By the way, it's important to keep your promise. You must return and say, look, I'm just too upset to talk right now. So let me take a little walk or let me drink a cup of tea. But come back to the person and try to resolve the issue. Go somewhere safe where you can calm down. Go sit in your car, as I mentioned before, or sit on the porch or listen to your music, or sit in the bench in the park, do something to help calm yourself down. Some people drink some tea, as I mentioned before, chamomile, catnip, peppermint tea, kava kava. Do things to help you calm down. Slowly drink your tea. And you don't want to drink ca caffeine, caffeinated tea or caffeinated coffee, because that will just speed you up and get you into a good rage there. Some people are better if they do something physical, Take a jog, do a brisk walk, go to the gym, read a book. You have to practice these skills. You just can't wait for your, wait to get angry and then do the skills. You practice these skills when you are not angry. Therefore, when you do get angry, you know how to use these skills. To control your anger, take a time out to stop the violence. Let yourself relax. Let go of that out of control feeling, take your time. I'll say more about relaxation a little later, but there are many techniques. Some people like to deep breathe to relax. After a while, you may be ready to return to the person after you have calmed down, done some deep breathing, jogged, took a brisk walk, or sat in the car, or sat on the porch. Return, talk with others about what happened, stay calm, go back to the original problem. Stick to the point. Don't start going from one topic to another topic. You made me angry when you did that last time. This, you did that the other day, and that caused me to get upset. Stick to the point at that time. And resolve that anger at that time. The way to do that, of course, is to follow some steps there. As I mentioned before, be direct. No more cold shoulders. Some people get angry with you, and they give you the silent treatment. Stop talking to you. They ignore you. Don't lecture the person. Just tell the truth. Say, I'm angry because you said this, or you didn't come home when you said you would. Stick to the point. Be direct. That's it. When you tell a person why you're angry, that's it. Don't give them a lecture about what they need to do. They shouldn't do that. Just say, you made me angry because you didn't do this. And that's it. Be specific. Don't be vague. Like, you kind of, sort of, you know what I mean. You have to be nicer. That's too vague. Say, if I get angry, you should say to me, I think you're getting angry. Maybe you should take a time out. Be specific. And be polite. You must practice good manners with each other. Good manners are not meant for strangers it's or people that you meet in public. Good manners starts within your relationship. Say please and thank you to each other. That will help stem this anger. I'm going to 
show you some pre preventing resentful feelings here. Do stick to the issue. Don't turn a disappointment into a disaster. If one thing goes wrong, you say everything is going to go wrong. So you say, well, since you did that, I'm going to do this. And that you just go do another wrong thing, and it becomes escalation into one form of disappointment to another. Do ask yourself what the problem is and what you can do to help. You want to be a participant in resolving the issue. Don't say you can solve the problem. The person you're angry with, as well as yourself, had to participate in the solution because it took two of you to cause this to happen, to manifest. So it takes two of you to solve it. Let yourself think and act or feel like a victim. You don't want to do that. Don't victimize yourself. We tend to do that a lot. People call you up on the phone and say, do you want to buy this insurance plan? Or you should do this. Or you, we have a bargain for you on long distance call. They're victimizing you. You should take control and say, I don't want to talk to you right now. And just hang up. Take control. Don't victimize yourself. Throw away old scorecards and concentrate on today. People take private scores of how many times you did something wrong to them during the week. And so when they do have a anger episode, they read off this whole scorecard that you don't know anything about where they have punished you for things you have said. Don't dwell on what the other person is doing to you. Dwell on what you're doing for yourself, and how you can change that. If you need help, get it. Don't go back to the old games. A person gets angry with you and you can't really defend yourself. You get given silent treatment or you turn up the music real loud to drown out their voice so you ignore them. They talk to you for an hour and they say, did you hear what I said? And you say, no. That's miniature anger. Be responsible for your own happiness. Don't judge the whole person because of one thing they do. Just judge that one activity that caused you to be angry. Stick to one issue at a time. Don't stack things. Rational thinking. Do. Challenge old thoughts that keep you angry. You have to change these things. You have to challenge yourself and be willing to grow. It's very scary to give up your anger because anger becomes a friend. It becomes something you can always find home when you need it. It's a friend, your companion, almost a lover. And you don't want to do that. You have to challenge yourself to throw out the old garbage. Think anti-anger thoughts. Don't awfulize. This is an awful thing. It's, our relationship is awful. It's just awful to talk to you about certain things. You're so touchy. Or you're just, you're just a bad person. It's just not in you to change. That's devilizing, we call it. All of these are things that people use to defend the anger, use to keep it escalating. You have to set certain goals to stay calm. That's the goal. You want to stay calm. That's the goal. It raises up some for you. Calm, at ease, quiet, serene, peaceful, composed, cool-headed, tranquil, relaxed, patient, steady, poised. None of that's going to happen when you're angry. This is just some dream. What you want to do is say, I have anger. I don't know how to use it properly. Let me figure out ways to use anger properly. Don't go to the extreme where you're trying to be calm, and then you get angry yourself for not being able to be, be calm, and that justifies you for being angry. It's like a never-ending wheel. Those are two kinds of calm. Calm, almost never getting angry. The other calm is learning how to express yourself better even when angry. That's the calm you want. There's nothing wrong with being angry and talking to people when you're angry. But you want to be able to express yourself and let the other person express themselves when you're angry. As we mentioned before, some relaxation skills that you can use to diffuse anger. You can... Soften your eyes when you're talking to people. Don't glare, staring, or squinting. Look at the person above their eyebrows and look at their third eye. Don't stare them in the eyes. It's too threatening. Let the small muscles around your eyes relax. Every time you start to tense up, go right back to your eyes. Make it a habit. Look above the person. Look at their eyebrows or at their third eye or at their ears. But don't look them in the eyes too stressful and it's intimidating. Don't point. If you're going to point, point with two fingers. Soften. Breathe deeply, as I mentioned earlier. Take deep breaths. Breathe in slow. Breathe out slow. Count if you have to. Count to ten. 
talk normally. Check out your voice. Find your normal speed, loudness, and pitch. If you whisper when you get tense or angry, speak up. If you, if you get loud, quiet down. The thing is to maintain flexibility. If you're trying to stay calm and keep a whisper voice and your voice gets high, then you could be angry with yourself, which means you have a reason to be angry with the other person because that's their fault that made you angry anyway and got you hollering. You go right into that merry-go-round of anger. Tighten up a few muscles, then relax them. Tense your shoulders, relax them. Tense your legs, relax them. Do this with the ones that uh, do this with the ones that seem the most tight. Breathe calmly as you do this. Think relaxing thoughts. Repeat these thoughts to yourself. For example, I will relax right now. I can stay in control. Just relax. It won't solve the issue if you run away from the anger. Try to. Anger, hate starts out as anger. This anger that you don't diffuse, it escalates into hate. Strength. Hatred is strong. This is anger that's what we call sealed over. You've used it so long that it's sealed over. You can't get out of your anger and no one can get in to help you solve it. You seal it over and now it becomes hatred. You don't hate somebody a little. Hate is thorough. It's 100%. You can't give a little hate. When you give hate, you give it at all. You may vary the flavor from raspberry to strawberry, but it's still a flavor, and the flavor is hate. So don't get diffused by that or confused by it. Hate is hate, and it's also a feeling, a thought, an emotion that you can manipulate and control. There's nothing wrong with it. You just have to learn how to use it positively. There's nothing wrong with hating someone who goes around killing children a good feeling, but you have to learn how to use it in a positive way. Emotions are not the part problem. You are the problem. Great emotion. The person who hates is dealing with an emotion as powerful and demanding as love. Threat. The person we hate seems to be a major threat to our lives, our values, or what we own. He or she is bad because of this. Hate, and it's like uh, having a, a pocket full of bowel movement and you walking around waiting to throw your hate on someone. And you haven't met that someone to throw the hate on. So meanwhile, you, you funky, you stink, because you got the hate in your pocket. That's what hate is, and it just makes your whole personality smell a different way, give off a different vibration, as we say today. Time, hate builds up over time. Sometimes it develops slowly, sometimes fast. Once built, though, it lasts. Sometimes it sticks around a lifetime. You may be able to get rid of maybe 70, 80 percent of your hate, but 20 percent of it is going to stay with you all your life. The inability to let go. Hate hangs around like a boring dinner guest. It's awful hard to let go of hate, even when you want to. The thing is, is to learn how to use it in a positive way. Then you don't have to let it go. Hate can sometimes give you the emotional drive you need to get things done. Hating to make a mistake helps you concentrate. You just have to learn how to use these emotions like a tool. Desire for revenge. People who hate feel wounded. They often want to hurt others as much as they have been hurt. And you can be the indirect object of someone's hate. You can remind them of someone they dislike or do something that someone they dislike does. And that can stimulate their hatred. And you get these negative frowns and wonder why people get hostile to you. It's not because of yourself. It's something you've done to remind them of someone they hate or is angry with. Interference with normal life. Hatred takes up a lot of energy. You can't think of anything else. You do things that don't make sense. You're driven by your hate. The person you hate haunts you. Hate is a wolf hollering in the mind. It's no need of trying to say, I will not hate. Give me the strength not to hate, and praying and all that sort of thing. You have the intelligence. You need to use it and learn how to use these emotions as a tool to help you better yourself. One of the things is to go back to the basic thing that goes on. You're having a conversation with yourself about your emotions, about your feelings, and you have conversations with other people. So let's just look at some of these rules of conversation. You have to say, how does what you say benefit you? How does what you say benefit the other person? How does what your words and behaviors, been, how do they benefit my art? The objective is, what you say to someone should benefit you, should benefit that person, and benefit my art, or else you shouldn't say it. 
Did you say what you said to hurt your, your friend or your mate? What do you think you were saying when you said what you said? Do you, do you say it because you wanted to, to argue? You were angry with the, yourself, your mate, your relationship, or because you, had, you do not have enough intelligence to say it another way? Sometimes we just don't have the ability to say it another way. It's like hitting a child. It's the inability of the adult. The adult has run out of enough intelligence to manipulate a child. So anger and hitting the child is their, their, their way of justifying them not having enough parenting skills. What was it, your attitude and facial expression and tone of voice and body language when you were talking to yourself or you were talking to someone else when you were angry or had some hatred about them? How did you feel while you were saying it? In an argument, do you pause between short sentences? Do you raise your voice, cry, get nervous, tense, point your finger, constantly interrupt the other person, feel hurt or upset? That's going to trigger your, your anger. That's going to trigger your hatred. Do you argue as a way to punish yourself or manipulate yourself or other people? Do you agree? Do you argue to get attention? Always focus the conversation on my art. And how you do that is saying, how does this benefit me? How does this benefit the other person? How does this serve my life? How does what I said benefit the other person? And how does it benefit me? How does it serve my life? Ask yourself those questions. And that helps you to control your anger and better manipulate it. Just following the basic rules of conversation with yourself, because we do a lot of talking to ourselves. Most of the time we talk to ourselves more than we talk to other people. And 70% of the things we say to ourselves, we forget. 20% of it we say is incorrect. Talking, individual rights, the ability to freely talk are given by a group. That you must understand. The ability to talk to yourself or talk to someone else in an angry way or with hatred is given to you by a group. Without a group, you have no rights. There's no such thing as you have an individual right. You have to have a group to protect your rights, attack your enemy, and defend you. Without that, you have no rights. And our conversation is mostly left over from slavery. That is our biggest problem. We still say these things. The master would say, hey, you, Buck, I want you to go with that winch over there and give me some pups. I want you to go with her. Then he'd tell the black slave woman, say, hey, you, uh, Josephine, I want you to go with that Buck over there and make me some pups. And what do we say today? I'm going with somebody. She goes with him. She, he goes with her. Those are the words of the slave master, to go with somebody and breed. So we have all of these group feelings that we got from another group. We have to look, all of that as, as a, look at all that as a race. The group must have the social and military power to protect your rights in order for you to have free conversation. And our conversation is only free because Europeans protect our rights. So we have a lot of things to work through as black people when we're looking at our anger that other groups do not have to deal with. Without a social and military group with power, there are no individual rights or free communications. Our communications are distorted and shaded. And that's what we have to understand. Our communications between man and woman and child and, and adult and our communication as a race is controlled by another group. That puts a lot of anger in us. And that is one thing we have to learn how to manipulate and control. A person must have total control over their culture to find their self, their life, their spirituality, and solve their problems. Without that, there's no such thing as a free conversation. Most of the time, we argue with each other, angry with each other, because of the, the whiteness in us. We argue with the whiteness in another black person. We anger with their whiteness, and then we get angry with our own whiteness, and we never get to our blackness. This is something that us, us as a group have to deal with. But remember, Without a culture or group that is free to educate, discipline, and protect, there cannot be individual freedoms. There cannot be freedom of speech. So we're dealing with a disease conversation form that we use. We have dysfunctional conversations with each other, and we enjoy them. And then we get upset because the conversations are dysfunctional. And then we get angry with that part. So on top of everything else, we got this extra added anger that we have to learn how to manipulate and, and deal with. A culture that does not have social and military powers in a state of oppression, revolution, war, slavery, or constant therapy. So you got to figure this out.
Either you are in constant therapy, I guess that's what the cry of the revolution. Hey, we got to bring some reality in this situation. That was the fire department. That brings reality in it. I'm glad it happened. We have to look at these things, how our conversation, how this video was interrupted by forces that we have no control over. And that's what I'm talking about, the anger. We're trying to have our own individual anger, and we don't have it. It's interrupted by our oppression. So we can't get angry with each other 100%. Talking, being angry, having hatred, having love is a therapeutic activity used to achieve ma'at, which is justice, reciprocity, correctness, harmony, liberty, and balance. A person under the disease of white supremacy is suffering from slavery trauma and a slave mentality. We are slaves talking to slaves. So we have to be more direct in our conversation and more forgiving in our conversation and our communication in order to achieve some kind of control over anger, to achieve a balance, understand that words are a tool, emotions are a tool, and we have to learn how to manipulate and control them in a positive way for our goodness as well as in a negative way, so we can see the damage that is done. You say, this is a negative way in which to control anger. We have to know both sides. You just can't know all right, because when wrong shows up, you won't identify it. You have to know right when you see it and wrong when you see it. And this is important. That's why I went over this subject briefly with you about anger and how it can be destructive in your relationship and some of the tools you can use to uh, manipulate and control it better.